What's up guys, Top Tier Yu-Gi-Oh here, and today is day one of daily uploads, and today I just want to talk about something that has been relevant in a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh news lately, and that is the topic of FTKs. And so there have been a lot of FTKs going around lately in both the TCG and the OCG. We have the Gemini FTK, we have Magician FTK, and then all the way in the OCG we have a Plant FTK that is also uh, wreaking havoc. And so I just want to talk about... Uh, the Magician FTK in particular because that's probably the one that had the most hype. Like last week people were all talking about emergency banning it and all sorts of things. But really if you look at that Magician FTK deck, it didn't do very well this past weekend. And so we had three premier events last weekend. We had the UDS, we had the ARG, and we had a YCS. If you look at the Magician FTK build, it really didn't do anything. Like it were it didn't top the UDS at all. Uh, there were only two in the top 16 of the ARG and then one or two at the YCS in Germany And so really if you think about it, it's like maybe Maybe um three to four tops out of like 60 And so that's not really a problem at all And so it's crazy because there was so much hype and news around it last week and it's almost disappeared And so in this video, I really want to talk about what happened I want to talk about some of the pros and cons of the Magician FTK and why it isn't doing as much as people thought it would and so before I get started, I just want to put a poll in the top right corner of the screen. Let me know what you think about FTKs. Do you think that FTKs are a problem? Or do you think that they're okay because they aren't really topping? So if you guys don't mind, please go ahead and answer that poll. I'm really curious to see what you guys think about that. But also while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's topic. And so, so first and foremost, I think we can all agree that Magicians are the best deck of the format. But there are really three different versions of Magicians floating around. And so I think it makes sense to compare the FTK build to those other builds when discussing it so that we can gain a more complete perspective on Magicians as a whole and then we can really narrow down on the FTK. So the first and most popular version of the deck is the one that was played by both YCS Atlanta finalists and then many other players in that top cut. It was also, um, it was also played by the winner of ARG Charlotte last weekend. And so this build has definitely had the most competitive success. And it's pretty traditional in that it plays a large robust magician engine that includes harmonizing purple poison black fang uh, and wisdom eye all at three and then it also plays at least one to two oath dragons along with one of each pendulum graph and the major differences from this build and the others is the inclusion of wisdom eye oath dragon and then the pendulum graphs now the second build is one that was played by a lot of the ppg players down at ycs atlanta most notably kamal who went undefeated day one before making top four and then Jesse Cotton, who won another regional with it like the weekend before, and then also topped Atlanta too, plus all of their other players who happened to top that event too. So this this uh, this build also had a lot of success. And the main uh, the main characteristics are that it cuts Wisdom Eye, it cuts the Pendulum Graphs, and focuses more on resolving Pendulum Call, and it tries to give itself a much higher ceiling than the other version. And then the third version is the aforementioned FTK build that we're going to be discussing more in depth here in this video. And now the FTK build is a lot closer to version 2 where it cuts Wisdom Eye and the Pendulum Graphs, but it replaces them with more Supreme King cards and Instant Fusions. And so, all three versions though played the Supreme King engine, the most popular ratio were a 3-2-3 ratio of Dark Worm, Scale 0, and then Dragon Shrines and Foolish Burials. But the version 3 builds, the FTK builds also played the 13 scale, which is Gate Infinity. And so the Supreme King engine is definitely standard at this point. Another thing that's sort of been trending upward are the Mythical Beast, and to where some of the first versions are playing it, uh, almost all of the version 2 decks are playing it, but none of the FTK builds are playing it. I think the only one that did was uh, my teammate Tony, who topped the ARG, he played the Mythical Beast in his FTK build, and so did a lot of my other teammates, and it worked out pretty well for us, but the results haven't backed that up yet, so we'll see about that. But um, next I just want to run through how the FTK works pretty generally. And so there may be three or four major requirements that you need to be able to do the FDK. And so first you need to be able to summon and resolve Dark Worm's effect. Next you need to be able to make Electromite pre-Pendulum Summon. Then you need to be able to Pendulum Summon four monsters while keeping Dark Worm in the extra deck. And then finally you need access to both of your Supreme King gates. Usually one is via Dark Worm and the other one's via Electromite, but you can really get them either way. You can also hard draw them or if you draw instant fusion, then you don't need your Supreme King Gates at all. And then the steps to do the FDK is, you make Electromite, you Pendulum Summon 4 monsters, then you get both of your Supreme King cards in scale, and so usually what that means is you'll use uh, Gate Infinity's effect to destroy itself in the field and destroy another card to put itself in the scale pretty much. 
So you can get it in scales like that, or you can just actually just put them both in the scales normally. So it doesn't really matter how you do it, they just have to both get in the scales somehow. Then you use Gate Zero's effect to destroy both of them to search Instant Fusion. Then Instant Fusion summons Nightingale, and then you summon both of your Venoms, and then both Venoms will copy Nightingale. And Nightingale has the effect to burn for 500 times its level. Venom is level 8. 8 times 500 is 4,000. Since you have two Venoms, 4,000 each, that's 8,000 damage. So that's the FDK in a nutshell. And so uh, it seemed like a lot just now, but it's not. It's very easy to do. It's very consistent. The only card that you actually need like individually is Dark Worm. Everything else you can sort of wing it. So there's a lot of variation in how you can perform these steps. This is just a, a general way of doing it. If you guys are interested in a combo video for this, I can actually just do that as well. And so uh, let me know if you're interested in a Pendulum FTK combo video. I can do that like maybe over the weekend. And uh, again, very easy to do. Another reason why it's so consistent is that there's nothing that you can draw to mess it up. And so if you draw your Supreme Kings, that's okay. If you draw Instant Fusion, that's also okay. Now you don't have to search it. And so there's, there's nothing that you can draw to mess it up. And there's nothing specific that you need to draw to do it outside of Dark Worm. So it's very easy to do, very consistent. And uh, a lot of times if you play this deck, you'll be FDKing your opponents. But um, it's not perfect. There are some problems. And I think it's important to identify those problems so that we can try to fix them. Or if you're not playing the deck, you can prepare for them and know exactly when to, when to disrupt them and how to beat them. So just understanding the deck more is going to help you whether you're playing it or playing against it. And so uh, next I just want to discuss some of the pros and cons of the FDK Magician deck. And now this isn't a, a full complete list, but it's just the things that I thought of, the things that I saw. If you have any more pros and cons or advantages, disadvantages, uh, please let me know in the comment section below because this is going to help everybody. And so let's go ahead and start with the pros. And so the first pro is that it's an FDK. And so that means you don't have to interact with your opponent in order to win. So this is very valuable because by denying your opponent the ability to play the game, then you have a much higher chance of actually winning the game because if you give your chance a, a, uh, an opportunity to play there's an opportunity for them to win and that's not what you want as the the player who is trying to win the game in the tournament and so you want to deny your opponent the ability to play if possible and that's exactly what this deck does which is a good thing now the second advantage is that instant fusion which you have to play for your combo also has more utility in that you can summon thousand eyes restrict to help break your opponent's boards when going second and so this is really valuable because Thousand Eyes Restrict is a dark spellcaster, which means it gets boost from all of your effects. And so that means that if you attack with it for some odd reason, it can be boosted by Purple Poison. It means you can bring it back with Black Fang. And all the other things that you do with dark spellcasters, you can do with Thousand Eyes Restrict. So that's actually really, really good. Especially if you're trying to clear your opponent's board and you have a Black Fang because you can take, you can use Thousand Eyes Restrict to take one monster, and revive it, take another monster, and then like break your opponent's board like it's super easy and it's uh, really really powerful however despite some of the good qualities the fdk again is not perfect it does have its issues and magicians are relatively resistant to hand traps if the pilot is good enough if they're smart and they can play through uh, different hand traps but the fdk doesn't have that luxury the fdk can be hurt by cards like ash ogre valor droll gamma cherries uh etc like karibo <laughs> So that's something that you have to be on the lookout for. And again, the other versions of Magicians can play around these to an extent. Like if your opponent has an Ash and your opponent Ashes like like your, your Dark Worm, it's not a big deal in a standard Magician deck, but it is a big deal for the FDK. Or if your opponent has a Ghost Ogre, if you're playing a standard Magician deck, you can play around Ghost Ogre by just not activating Electromite's effect on Summon or the Ignition effect, and you can save it for after you Pendulum Summon pretty much. So you can play around Ghost Ogre pretty easily if you get the read on it. But if you're playing the FDK, depending on your hand, you might not have that option. Sometimes you need to use Electrum's on Summon effect in order to get your combo pieces to FDK. And so if you need to use Electrum's effect and your opponent has that Ogre, then they're stopping your combo, and so that's not very good. <laughs> Same thing about Valor. If you have to use Electrum's effect and they Valor you, that's gonna hurt. Or if you need to, or if they Valor your Starving Venoms, if you're not playing a rank eight, you're gonna be out of luck because you don't wanna end on two rank eights, that kinda sucks. Or two level eights, I should say. Uh, Droll hurts because you have to search with Dark Worm and then you have to maybe search Instant Fusion. And then of course, Gamma and Cherries also hurt as well. And so being more susceptible to hand traps is a huge, uh, downside of playing this FTK, it's a huge disadvantage compared to the other Magician decks. 
because normally these don't hurt you at all. Now they hurt you a lot. Now the second issue is that the FTK build is inherently less consistent than the other versions because you're forced to play more cards that don't extend your plays going first. So you have to play Instant Fusion and you have to play Gate Infinity. These cards aren't inherently bad and they can work with your engine even. Like again, drawing Instant Fusion can be great when you get when you uh, you get to go second or they can be good when you get drolled or ashed or ogred so you don't have to use your scales to search it. Sometimes it's really good to draw, but it's also not good to draw because it isn't a card that extends your plays. It isn't a card that really makes your engine work. And so like if you if you need more dark monsters in order to summon and make your starving venoms and you don't have them but you draw an instant fusion instead you're not going to be able to do your fdk and so even though these cards are good because they're not like engine cards they make your deck less consistent and so again even though drawing them doesn't mean you lose and it doesn't mean you can't do your combo you will always always wish that it was a different card especially when you need the rest of your hand to be good to be able to summon electron before the pendulum summon and be able to pendulum summon four monsters or three with harmonizing. And so again, the FTK build is inherently less consistent because you have to play these cards. And now the third and final issue is that you lose extra deck utility because you're forced to play at least Nightingale, a second Starving Venom. And then if you look at the guy who topped Atlanta, he also played Thousand Eyes Restrict and Link Rebo. And you're not forced to play those cards, but if you if you want to like take advantage of the the good thing about playing an instant fusion while going second, again, then you have to play Thousand Eyes Restrict, and then with that Link Rebo, and so that's already a whopping four different cards that you wouldn't be playing in a normal Magician deck. And now, the extra deck is only 15, and so having to play four different cards out of 15 makes a huge difference. And one of the big advantages of playing Magicians as a whole is getting so much utility from your extra deck, because now with, uh, now with Double Iris Magician banned, it's hard to get a lot of utility out of your main deck because you're not being able to search defense within your main deck. So if you need to get defense, it has to come from your extra deck. If you have to play four other cards in your extra deck, you're losing some of those defensive options or some of those offensive options. And so it really hurts you as a whole because you're forced to cut cards like Ignister or Naruto, Omega, maybe Supreme King Clearwing or uh, uh, Abyss Dweller. There are a lot of cards that sometimes you have to cut in order to make space for the cards necessary for the FDK. And it's a very big downside. And it's something that can really compound with the other issues because now if you're stopped by a hand trap, you're playing a worse pendulum deck because you don't have the options that you normally would have. Like it's a lot harder to end on two negates when you had to cut Narito. Or it's a lot harder to break your opponent's board since you had to cut Ignister. And so now like your sort of contingency plans for not FDKing are not very good. And so it's like... You're, you're more susceptible to disruption, and then once you get disrupted, you can't really do as much as you normally could, and you're less consistent. And so all those things really mix together to make this deck, like, I'm not saying it's bad, it's definitely a good deck, but you really have to ask yourself, like, is it worth it? Is it worth these three negatives just to FDK your opponent? Like, you really have to ask yourself that, and you really have to look at the format and decide whether it's a right time for it. because something like hand traps and interactions are things that are format dependent if you looked at ycs atlanta people were thinking that ash is bad people weren't playing very many hand traps at all but if you looked at this past weekend a lot of people were playing hand traps just to quote unquote not lose to the fdk this undoubtedly made it more difficult for fdk decks to do well and if you look at one of the top eight players from Bokum, he even main decked Leonidas, like a card that doesn't do anything in any other matchup. It only stops the FDK. So players are going to great lengths to not get FDK'd by this deck. And that is one of the reasons why it had so much trouble this weekend because people were prepared for it. They were playing disruptions. And so when they disrupted it, it was less consistent and had less utility and therefore was a, a, a less good or worse pendulum deck. And so that is why the Pendulum FTK did not do very well this past weekend, and why I personally don't think that it's a very big issue in the format overall. But, now that we've addressed these issues, now is I think the time where we can make changes. Now I think is the time where we can deck build around these things to make it better for the next weekend or whenever your next event is. I think now you can really look at the, the pros and cons and decide how you want to change your deck and what you can do to, uh, again, make it better overall. And if you're not playing this deck, you can really look at this and see sort of how you want to how you want to play against in the future. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and could get a little bit of value from it. I think this is something that you have to do with a lot of your decks. You have to be able to look at your deck's advantages and its disadvantages. You have to look at the timing of the format. And you really have to decide like whether it's a good choice for the event that you're going to. And so again, I hope you guys can take something out of that. Special shout outs to everyone who commented on the last video with suggestions. I really appreciate it. Special shout outs to Matthew Stevens, Lazarus McTasty, and uh, Graceful Charity for suggesting the FTK. It was a really close call between that and um, and uh, World Chalice. So if you guys still want to hear about World Chalices, just let me know in the comment sections again. And I'll put that on like the list of videos to make. And eventually I'll talk about World Chalice because that's one of my favorite decks actually. I really enjoyed it since they came out. And so uh, thank you guys for that. Now as for tomorrow's video, once again I'm going to need your guys' help coming up with a topic. And tomorrow's topic is uh, to observe a pet or favorite animal and then do something inspired by it. And so um, I'm just thinking of like animal and pet related cards. And so the things that come to my mind are Zodiacs first of all because Zodiacs were obviously based around a lot of animals. Uh, next we had Fire Fist. Fire Fist like Bear, Gorilla, uh, Crane, Rooster. Fire Fist was a really fun deck back in the old days. Uh, Mermails are a deck that are based on animals. Um, ooh. Dinosaurs maybe? I don't know. <laughs> well, Gladiator Beast. There are a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh cards that are based on animals. And so just let me know down in the comment section what your favorite animal is or your favorite pet and maybe a deck that's based around that. And I'm going to try to look at a, a deck that I can update for the current format and try to make as competitive as possible. And so if you guys want to see like Gladiator Beast in 2018, I'm going to make a damn good Gladiator Beast deck. And so uh, again, just let me know what you guys are interested in seeing that's based on animals. And it'll be up tomorrow at 8 p.m. And so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow.